Hi everyone. Um, <laughs> necklace is crooked. Uh, how's it going? I know they're still kind of telling you guys that I'm here and I am uh, logged in. Don't mind my clicking here for a moment. Um, I am Charity from Ghost Town Metalworks and I was lucky to get logged in and be able to hack quote unquote hack the Pepe Tools account last night. Um, and we had a good time last night for my live. That live has expired and I gave, uh, I gave a tour. Hi guys. Um, I gave a tour of my, of my workshop over at Ghost Town Metalworks last night. Had a pretty good question and answer session. Um, we talked to small businesses to support. We talked to tools. Uh, we talked all kinds of stuff. Patina, sealants. It was an awesome and good time. Um, there was another wonderful maker and instructor that was supposed to be live tonight, and she's having some tech difficulties. Hi guys. So I got asked to fill in tonight um, for a quick live. Hi. And wanted to give another go at that. Um, if anyone saw the live last night and has thought of any questions in the meantime that you wish you would have asked, um, you are more than welcome to ask that at any point during our live tonight. I don't have intentions of being on here like an hour like we were last night. Uh, it was a, it was a little bit of a longer one, I know, but hola. Um, but it's good to see you guys here. Uh, it's great to see faces, you know, names popping in here, accounts popping in here, and just joining each other and being together uh, during these times. So, hi again. I'm Charity, and I uh, run the page over at Ghost Town Metalworks. Um, I also have another side side gig that I'm getting going called Heavy on the Metal. We're going to be working on my own uh, clothing line for metal workers um, that's conscious and made in the U.S. where I live. So that's pretty cool too. And I'm a mom and I've been metalsmithing for about three years and the first two years were part-time and I've been full-time for about the last year. And just to recap a little bit of that uh, for anyone that missed the live last night, and I uh, did a plethora, hi guys, um, Luciano, uh, I did a plethora of tool purchase from Pepe Tools in the last year and have just been so immensely happy with them. Um, their tools are amazing, they're well made, the customer service is awesome, so I wholeheartedly um, support everything about this brand. I don't get any kickback, I'm not sponsored or any of that stuff, so I'm just someone that really believes in it and I like supporting things I believe in and I'm a super loyal person, a loyal customer. So that's what I'm here for is just show you guys the tools that I bought and uh, I'm still getting used to using some of them. Um, one uh, tool, it's not a Pepe Tools tool, but I do have a Lost Wax uh, centrifuge that's over here waiting to be used. But aside from that, I've luckily been able to um, tinker around with the new, the new toys I got and start to figure them out. I was asked uh, to maybe do a ring stretcher uh, tutorial tonight, so I am excited to show you guys that. I have a, a band, actually I have two bands that I would like to stretch. One is silver, and sterling silver, and the other one's gold, and I believe it's 22 karat gold. I'll have to look in the band really quick when we grab it. So I really want, I bought, I bought this ring as scrap actually, and you know, totally could hack it up and use it, melt it down, use it to make an ingot, right? But I really like it and it's just such a beautiful yellow. So sometimes you buy this, this jewelry that you're supposed to destroy and used to make new jewelry, and sometimes I don't have the heart to do that. This one had like some kind of stamping on the inside of it that I don't exactly know what it means, but I take it as like a little bit of a custom thing, so I won't melt it down unless I have to. So that being said, I really want to stretch this one. I want it to be a thumb ring. I love having thumb rings, and I've made two thumb rings for myself out of silver that are pretty heavy duty and have had good friends totally fall in love with it and they fit them perfectly so I've gifted it out twice. Um, so I just want another thumb ring. <laughs> so I'm going to stretch, see if I can stretch this one to be able to fit my thumb. So right here we go. Let me see if it says, I'm pretty sure it's a 20, 20 karat gold. So I looked it up. Yeah. 
So this is a 20 karat gold ring. So I wanted to um, anneal this and stretch it. This one is just a sterling silver band. And it's a pretty pretty thick one. And both of these are comfort bands. So I think what I'm going to do is come up with a goal size that I'd like each of these to be. So I have my handy dandy, my finger sizer, right? Um, I honestly don't know what brand this was. Uh, good on them for marketing and just putting their little icon, but um, we'll make it a thumbs up instead of a thumbs down. <laughs> uh, I bought this off Amazon when I very first started metalsmithing three years ago, so no idea on the actual quality or anything of it. Become much more aware of, of tool quali quality, etc. since that purchase, but I'm going to go ahead and measure my thumb and see where we're at for our goal there. And thumb rings generally run a little bit bigger, you know. I think my thumb is probably about a, a seven or a six and a half. Yeah, six and a half is a little tight over my knuckle. I can get it on, but, you know, and it's not so bad once it's on. So maybe we'll shoot, we'll shoot for a six and a half to seven. And then this other one, I want it to be a pinky ring. And I haven't had a chance to reduce it yet. I may just end up making it into um, a stacker ring of some sort. I'm not sure yet what to do with this, but these are the ones we'll be using tonight. So we're gonna head over to um, my soldering station and I'm going to anneal both of these and get started that way. I have stretched um, plain wedding bands before that were ones that I had made. Uh, that were sterling silver and I didn't anneal it first but I did not overly work hard in that ring I knew I hadn't because I knew that there was a chance the sizing might need to be adjusted it was a surprise ring um, for uh, a loved one um, so I didn't want to work hard in it too much because I knew there's potential I might need to do some sizing adjustment on it so one of the other wedding bands um, that I did was a sterling silver one I stretched it and actually stretched it a whole size no problems at all. I didn't anneal it first because, I, like I said, I had made it, so I knew I hadn't overly work hardened it or anything. These, I have no idea. They came, like I said, in some scrap jewelry that was intended for melting down. So I uh, am going to go ahead and anneal these just to be on the safe side. Um, I don't have as great of a camera set up over there at my soldering station. So I'm trying to decide if I bring you guys over there with me and you can watch. I might be able to do that. Let's drag you over there so you can see, okay? Let's see if I can make this happen. Move my counterweight there and unplug my light. All right, come with me. We'll see. Keep the can keep the phone far away enough from the soldering station where I don't end up melting it. Right, <laughs> would not be the best situation. So you can kind of see my soldering down there. Let's turn on a light. Some extra light in the area. So I normally have um, a lot more of these insulating bricks over here at my soldering station, but I had moved those over. Um, if you watched my live last night, you saw where I moved them. I moved them so that I could use my crucible mm -hmm. and melt a whole bunch of silver down and make ingots. So I actually transferred this area so I had more room to work in to a table over there. And I moved a whole bunch of these insulated bricks. So usually I have a little bit more of like a fortress built over here. And um, I love you. <laughs> Thanks, I love you too. Um, I usually have more of a fortress built up here. And I don't. It's looking kind of sad right now. But this is a trick that I learned um, for annealing metal, and I'm going to keep hunkering down here being kind of weird and awkward, uh, is to get a Sharpie. So let me get a Sharpie out. Okay, black Sharpie. Sharpie in general. Have you guys ever heard of this trick before? Use a Sharpie as your indicator of when your metal is properly annealed. So I don't know if anyone else has ever heard of that trick before. Hi, Laura. Um, so do a spot, you know, it doesn't have to be a big spot on your piece of metal you're gonna read to O'Neill. Just make it so you can see it, okay? Can you see my black spot? Okay, 
So we're going to do one on the gold, and we're going to do one on the silver. Okay, same thing. Um, you probably won't be able to see the color change from the camera, but I will, I will show you afterward that it's gone. So I have an acetylene air torch. I'm not sure what everyone else's setups are at home. Um, you know, these... These rings are not like super substantial, so I'm not gonna switch out to like a massively big tip. Um, <laughs> hi there, hi everyone. So I'm gonna say this one's sufficient. Well, this is a size one tip. This should be okay, I think, for kneeling. If I really wanted to step it up a game, I do it to a number two, um, which I use sometimes, but I don't wanna melt it either. Um, I am a safety nerd, to say the least. So this comes from me being a licensed veterinary technician. So I have uh, like 14 years in the veterinary, so that's animal medical field. And we take safety pretty seriously. So that kind of spills over into my realm for metalsmithing. Um, I always put on all my protective gear. I actually solder with protective glasses on. I know you guys are gonna look at me and think I'm so nerdy but look at me with my retinas that aren't burned. So these are glasses I bought off Amazon. Um, I will um, happily give out the information for these uh, when, you know, if anyone wants it, but the brand is Maggio, M-A-G-I-O. And these are actually graded to be able to help uh, reduce a lot of that light spectrum that comes out of a torch. These by no means replace using darkened um, glasses that have an even higher rating that are meant for using like a really large torch, like especially if you're like melting in a large amount of metal and doing the whole like crucible thing or the casting thing, you should definitely have some more heavy duty glasses and those would look more like these. Okay. These are super intense. This is what I use when I'm melting down on my scrap. They're pretty sweet retro, huh? You have those same ones? Yeah, they're awesome. I love these. I totally will be a weirdo and wear these out on the beach in the summertime. Look, sand won't even blow on the side. These great <laughs> side protection. This is a little bit overkill for just soldering, and it can be hard to keep track of what you're actually doing if you're wearing something this dark. Now, if you're just melting down metal, very important. So these do have um, some spectrum protection, and you're protecting your eyes in case something crazy happens. Sometimes um, solder can sputter, uh, you know, with the flux and everything on there. You just, you never know. Uh, if you're melting down little rounds on here, sometimes if they have a little bit of moisture in the round or something odd, sometimes those little rounds, the metal rounds, can actually explode. So it's good to be covered up. I like to have my face covered up. I cover up my eyes. I actually do wear a mask. I know these are a little bit hard to come by right now, and I totally respect that. If you're soldering without a mask, um, I hope to God you have a really good fume extractor immediately over your soldering station. Um, metal smithing is extremely toxic uh, if you're not doing that. So sorry, this is turning into like an OSHA PSA, but this is the mask that I wear. Right now, you can't really get these easily in the states that I know of. You can get the filter refills fine, but the brand is 3M, and these are the P100 um, NIOSH rating. Um, this is a pretty good for particulates and stuff. Um, I, I used to wear this one, but my filters need to be re replaced. This is even more intense. This is really honestly what I should be wearing for soldering, but I can tell that my filters are starting to go and this is not um, as good as it should be right now. So I've actually been using this one, which I've been told is, is an okay replacement. You know, there's nothing necessarily wrong with it. These filters are more expensive, but they do great with like gases and everything. But these masks um, come, you know, they're reusable, so these filters actually come off. Um, I couldn't really find any replacement filters like this right now. They're actually 3M brand. They're all back ordered or out of stock just because of, you know, what we're in the middle of. So I'm sure a lot of people bought them up. But please cover your face, buy a ventilation system. You know, a bandana is better than nothing. It really is not going to do you a ton of good. Um, so I really recommend stepping it up from there. Okay. Hi. And then I also have an apron that I always wear. So that means we're doing goggles. We're doing mask, which means you won't be able to hear me for a minute, but I know you guys will hang in there, right? Kind of look and sound like Darth Vader or a stormtrooper. And I have an apron that I wear. 
or if I'm not wearing my apron, I actually have a pretty sweet jumpsuit I like to wear, a utility suit. So be safe. Sometimes molten things come shooting off the table at you and um, you know can land on your shoes. I'm being a little bit naughty right now. I'm usually wearing um, clothes. I'm wearing closed toed shoes for sure. But I'm wearing like cute leopard print zipped up booties. Today's my birthday and I feel like wearing leopard everything. Why not? Um, but I usually wear, try to wear like Doc Martens, which are leather. Um, or I have a pair of leather, uh, my, a pair of Jordans that are black that are pretty sweet. That I swiped for my stepson when he grew out of them. Um, keep your toes covered. I get like severe anxiety when I watch smithing videos and people are like hanging out barefoot in their studio and like soldering stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh, gotta give me anxiety tech. So I've got this apron that I wear. Um, it's probably good to have it up a little bit higher even. So try to have yourself covered up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna light my torch. Okay, I'm gonna go through and uh, anneal both of these rings. Thanks for the happy birthday. <laughs> Um, for anyone that's just jumping on, we're annealing a 22, I think I said, 22 carat ring, and we're annealing a sterling silver ring. Um, hi from Ecuador in the middle of the Vulcans. Awesome. I've been down to Costa Rica and the Honduras and Guatemala, so around those regions. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and we're going to anneal these because we're going to get ready to stretch them. So uh, we already marked these with black Sharpie. That's a tip for anyone that might have missed that, hopping in here late. Do a little mark of black Sharpie on your metal and that'll be your temperature indicator once you've reached the good temperature. Um, I did, I'm just learning gold, so I'm still very new to working in gold. Um, I have not annealed a gold ring yet. So this is an experiment for me and I know it's very ballsy for me to be doing this on a live video, but look at me not care because this is all a learning experience and if it doesn't work for some reason, you guys get to learn from my mistake, right? That's what this is all about. Have annealed lots of sterling silver, no problem there. So we are marking with a Sharpie. I'm going to heat it to the temperature till the Sharpie disappears. Thanks for the birthday wishes. And um, then we're going to quench and then we're going to head over to my ring stretcher and get these marked up to a size that we want them to be. So hang in there. I'm gonna put on my Darth Vader mask so I won't be able to talk to you guys for a minute. So just watch and appreciate. All right, kind of mixed reviews. <laughs> These actually have the shade two green glasses. These are actually rated MSZ87+. Plus, so they do take care of these uh, awesome soldering needs from what I researched. Um, so I went ahead and used um, the Sharpie as an indicator. Um, I'd read that with gold, you want to hit 
it until the Sharpie disappears and then you want to try to maintain that temperature for a little bit longer. So when you guys saw me stop and like do the thumbs up on the gold, that meant that the Sharpie went ahead and disappeared and that I was kind of coming in to hit it a little bit longer to try to keep that temperature. So, um, yes, thank you. Pablo's hopping in here. Ink of the Sharpie burns at the same temperature of the annealing. So um, we did the Sharpie trick before I annealed them. So there's a pro right there giving you those tips. Pablo, I just told them before you hopped on here that um, I just started working on gold and I have not annealed an all gold ring yet. So that was my first time annealing, um, annealing the gold ring and I did it in front of you guys because like I said, no secrets, right? I like adventures together. So I did go ahead and quench these. I read some conflicting reviews about letting stuff air cool um, versus quenching it, but I did go ahead and quench it this round just, I guess, for, for sake of, of speed for the live video. If anyone has any preferences about what they think is better, air cooling um, or whatnot, I am more than open to that. Um, I know that if you quench too quickly, like take immediately from here and put in there, that I know that you can shock the metal and it will potentially cause your metal to become brittle and it might break when you work on it later. So I definitely don't recommend going from here to there. So if you notice, I did go from here to here, which this is tile left over from us uh, tiling our bathroom and our uh, kitchen and our house. We had like two or three slabs left over and it wasn't enough to do anything with. So I actually have tile um, as part of my soldering setup so it protects some of the wood on my bench from getting seared or anything. So this looks like barn wood, but it's actually ceramic. So I set the stuff here for a second before putting it in there. And um, thanks for the good job. And I uh, was able to quench it and you still heard it. It was still hot, even though it sat for a minute. So I believe I gave it enough time in between. So we're gonna head over to, um, I'm gonna get a paper towel. Actually, I have a big, handkerchief here. This works too for wiping off. And you know, I didn't do any um, fire uh, scale prevention on these because it was hitting it pretty quick. Um, you know, these are pretty small pieces and we reached that annealing temperature pretty quickly. I would think if you had a pretty dense piece, it might be smart to do some fire scale prevention, doing like the boric acid with denatured alcohol thing and then letting it dry. I have seen some people set it on fire to make it dry more quickly, but from what I've researched, it's a little bit in haste. It, I guess it does a better job usually if you let it air dry, but I don't know. So we'll see. Um, the silver looks great. There's no redness on it at all. So as far as having any fire scale on it, it looks great. It's nice and bright white. Um, and usually when I anneal silver, it ends up being a little bit more of a darker gray. This is stamped a 925, so I guess guess we'll see. Almost makes me wonder if it's more like a fine silver than a 925 and it got misstamped. So I'm gonna um, take you guys over to the ring bender now and I will say that my natural daylight is showing through my garage door there, so hopefully the light's not too interfering, but we'll, we'll look at it and see how it does. You guys just be sure to let me know if there's a a problem with you being able to see. Ooh. Okay, so bench area. All right. See, I have this beautiful natural light, but I think if I tip this down a little bit, you guys will be able to see it a little bit. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll give you guys a close-up look uh, at the ring bender, and then I'll move you back over here so you can kind of watch from a distance. And I already measured my finger for the one that I wanted the gold to be able to hang out in. Um, so I really want to replace my thumb ring that I keep giving away. Keep making thumb rings and giving them away. Because I love people. And it's hard to tell someone no when they love it, right? So um, I'm going to switch the camera around and show you guys what the ring stretcher looks like. This is Pepe's um, new ring stretcher. Going to take a little bit of a moment for bragging rights. I try not to do that very often, but I am going to tell you that I got really lucky and this was actually the very first ring stretcher off their line um, because I happened to message them 
back at the beginning of November asking about a ring stretcher. And it was after I'd already, I'd already bought my, I did like a custom rolling mill from them. I bought um, a jump, jump ring uh, maker and um, got stuff for ingots and stuff for wire poles. So they said, well, funny that you ask because we're literally just getting uh, ready to have ring stretchers come off the line in like a week. So he told me that they actually grabbed the first one off the line and it was for me. So I actually got the very first new ring stretcher, which I couldn't even believe. So, oh, we have lots of questions coming in. Um, I'm gonna show you guys the ring stretcher really quick and flip the camera around and I will um, show you guys what it looks like and then I can answer some of those questions for you, okay? All right, so this is their new ring stretcher. Um, you can see all the sizes marked on there and it goes all the way, so US sizes, okay. So size one, and it goes all the way down to a 15. Hi there. Um, this is the reducing portion. Um, this is metal. I'm not sure, I have seen some of the newer ones that are that are coming out and like they have like a plastic part here. So I'm not sure what the difference is to have plastic, it looks like plastic to me, versus metal. This disc thing weighs a ton though. But you can see how this reducing function works. I haven't had a need for reducing rings yet. Um, I honestly don't make, um, I guess I, I don't, I'm not to totally into repairs right now because I'm mostly self-taught. So I try to be, I try to refer people to people that have properly gone to jewelry school or at least taken courses on repairs. Um, if I know the people really well, I'm willing to do it as long as they understand the risk <laughs> associated. But how this works is you would find the appropriate size you want and then the handle works in reverse and you're actually smashing the ring down in there right to reduce the size of it. So the inside of the hole here actually does taper some. And I know this comes out and flips over. So um, I think that gives us different depth or different sizes, but this is what the whole disc looks like. And it is a pretty substantial weight. How uh, the ring stretcher works is it has these different slats. So you can see these lines coming down here. Okay, this is this allows, and it goes all the way around, this allows the ring stretcher to be able to do a parallel wall stretching. So when you put a ring on here and you're actually pushing it back, you can see those lines get a little bit bigger and then they get closer and they get bigger and they get closer, they close up. This allows for more like a parallel stretching of the inside of your ring, which means you should not have to put the ring on, stretch it, take the ring off, flip it over, put it back on and stretch it again because most traditional ring stretchers, you do have to do that because of this tapered mandrel. Well, Pepe Tools is super intelligent and they figured out a tech way to be able to give, your, give a perfect parallel stretch the first time. You don't have to take your ring off and flip it back around, which I think is pretty fe freaking fabulous and great, right? So. You can put um, your rings on there and see kind of what size it is. Um, something else I kind of use this for too is just reshaping rings, but I do have to give you, um, <laughs> have a good dinner. They're gonna go eat. Um, I am going to uh, tell you if you do use this for reshaping. So you can see like, I don't know if it's hard for you to tell or not, but this ring's not totally round anymore. It's kind of squished a little bit. Um, if you're really careful and don't allow it to rest down low and hold it up a little high, you can minimally use this for reshaping, um, but I don't necessarily recommend it for that. Uh, you know, I think doing the trick with putting it on your steel mandrel and using your rawhide hammer works plenty great for that, but this has worked well at um, kind of reshaping stuff, so you can kind of use it for that a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and see... Hmm. I almost think, sorry guys, thanks for rolling with me. Like I said, this was a kind of a fill-in video type situation. I'm gonna see if I can get my cell phone stand to chill out over here on my stump anvil. That way you guys can keep watching more closely. I feel like you're so far away if I put you on my desk over there. Okay, thanks for hanging. Sorry for still <laughs> moving you guys around so much. Okay, 
So you saw that I uh, measured my thumb and everything um, before I came over here. So uh, I know kind of what size I want to go to. I'm shooting for a, between a six and a half and a seven. It's for me. I'm not a super picky person. And a six and a half felt a little tight to get over my thumb knuckle, but it felt good once it was on. A seven went on pretty easily and didn't come off easy. So uh, I think we're just going to shoot somewhere for in there. So this is saying that this ring is already a size six. So that means we're gonna stretch it almost a full size. Uh, this is why it's a good idea to anneal first. Asking a ring to stretch by a full size is kind of a lot. So let's be nice to our jewelry and not ask it to crack and fall apart. Um, so let's see here. I'm just gonna give, I'm not even pushing that much you guys, I'll scroll this way so you can kind of see my my movement on this. Okay, this is the arm coming up. I've barely started to push it back. I can see that the lines are starting to come apart here. Um, use caution and go a little bit slowly so that you don't accidentally overstretch your ring. Okay, so I'm going to watch this real close. I'm going to do a full push all the way down, and I'm going to see how far it gets us. Okay, is a size six before I did this. So I'm actually gonna do a full rotation down and then we'll measure the size again and we'll see where we're at, okay? Okay, that was a full pull. Super easy, not hard at all. I bring it down, that lands me. I'm gonna say it's probably about a six and three quarters. So you can see how easy that was. Um, no physical issue with me. This is bolted down. My wonderful husband, um, bolted all of these pieces of equipment onto the stump anvil for me. So um, this is not going anywhere. I admit I tried stretching a ring once without having this bolted down. It was much more difficult. Your life will be way easier if you just go ahead and bolt it down to something. If you're in a smaller space and you can't commit to having something like this in a stationary spot, um, say that you only have two work surfaces and you need to be able to keep options open for having other things in that space. Uh, you can actually get, you know, a substantial size board and drill holes in it and attach this to the board and just make sure there's enough of a lip left over and you can use it on a table that the table has a lip and use, you know, C clamps um, to help hold it in place uh, while you go ahead and use the ring stretcher. You can do that same thing for a rolling mill. If you don't want to permanently install it anywhere, you can install it on a sturdy, thicker piece of wood that can then be attached to a workspace, a bench area with a C-clamp. So that's another thing too. Um, same thing with, I have a jump ring maker right here. Okay, I did go ahead and attach the base here, but all of these other parts come out and get out of the way when I actually wanna use this um the hand crank you know for uh twisting and making the the wire on these little mandrels here so there are options if people feel like they're a little bit um tight on space don't feel like that means you can't have tools you can still have tools you just have to be smarter with how you think about how you use them and how you store them and uh, i'm sure there's lots of smiths out there that have a lot of tips for using smaller spaces. I'm very blessed here that I have a two car garage, so I do realize that. But okay, we went ahead and stretched this and I'm gonna take a minute to scroll back up and see, I know we had some questions coming in. So let me see, someone asked um, what my favorite stone is. I don't technically have a favorite stone, but um, well, I guess I can throw it out there. I think Stone Mountain Turquoise, it's from my hometown in Nevada, a very small town. And I got to hand pick that mine with them last year and mine it. So maybe I would say that's my favorite stone. Uh, it's outside from outside of uh, Yarrington, Nevada, like an hour and a half from Reno out in the desert. So maybe that's my favorite. Um, do I work on repairs? I did talk about that for a little bit. Um, generally not, I'm not properly trained. I'm mostly self-taught. I was lucky to have um, a very beginner's silversmithing course back in 2004 when I was working on my undergrad for biology but I'm an art person, so I took um, jewelry one and two at the university. Um, that's all they offered. They didn't have any more jewelry classes beyond that. So being a jewelry major wasn't even um, an option. <laughs> Otherwise I probably would have switched. I don't know if my parents would have 
would have felt like they were very disappointed or not. But, you know, those jewelry classes led to me where I'm at now. So, um, I think those were all the questions for now. Did anyone else have any questions about that? Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and um, stretch this sterling silver ring. And I think what I'm going to do, what about Corona? Corona, we had that talk last night. It's everywhere. I think everyone's in here because they want to talk about stuff besides Corona. So we're going to talk about stretching rings and jewelry and stuff. Um, let's stretch this sterling silver ring. I don't have any specific plans for it. So what do you guys say we do an experiment with this? I'm going to see what size it is on here. Let's see how much stretching that we can get out of it. I'm just curious to see if we annealed it. Um, let's see what the capabilities are of this before needing to anneal it again um, without breaking a solder seam and that sort of thing. Um, this doesn't have anyone's name on it. I like experiments. This is my science side coming out, you guys. Remember? Biology degree. Pre-veterinary. I love this kind of stuff. I love figuring stuff out. So let's see what we can stretch it to. Okay. I'm going to say it's like a four and three quarters right now. So um, our last ring, our gold ring, which was a 22 carat, okay, almost pure gold, very close. Uh, I easily got that almost a full size with one, one full rotation back there. So let's see what we can do with this little, cute little uh, four and three quarter sterling silver ring that we just annealed. Hopefully our solder seam can hang in there. <laughs> I can tell it wasn't casted because the solder seam showed up a little bit after I annealed it. All right, let's see. Okay, that was one full pull. Okay, it's down to five and a quarter. So it only stretched half a size since then. Okay, thanks for joining, Pablo. That's super awesome. 109, oh my gosh, go to sleep, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for hanging and making sure I didn't mess it up. <laughs> I didn't mess it up in front of you. That's cool. Um, Sweet dreams and hang in there. I know that Spain is, is probably pretty crazy right now too, just like everywhere else. Um, and okay, someone asked a question here. Are there any tools for sizing change? My best, uh, well, I don't know what you mean, like measuring what size the ring currently is, then you would want a sizing mandrel. Uh, I have a kind of cheaper one that, you know, you can buy them in wood, you can buy them in plastic, uh, you can buy them in aluminum. The only thing is, is that you don't want to use those as actual tools. All you're using it is as a measuring device. If you buy one of those cheaper ones, if you try to do any forming on it, you're going to totally ruin it and you won't be able to use it again. So if you want to be able to double up, say you're limited on space, then go ahead and get a good ring mandrel that has a the sizing listings on it and I really recommend getting one that has the quarter sizes so depending on what country you're from so US sizing you know it would have size six six and a quarter six and a half six and three quarter size seven I think that's the most helpful to get one that has that many marks on it and try to get one um, that is pretty well labeled I have a working mandrel that's a steel one that I've had since the very beginning um, when I was kind of, you know, you're penny pinching a little bit, you're trying to get your bench set up without going super broke. Um, it's not the best quality mandrel. I will be getting another one and I actually have two mandrels. I have one that's kind of like a more like a D shape um, for the cross section instead of circle and that works great for sizing rings that look more like this shape, okay, that don't have a fully round band. And I'm happy to show you guys kind of what that mandrel looks like too. But I would use one of those to size it first. Um, and if it's if you don't need to, to bump up your size that much, I mean, just use your rawhide hammer or your plastic hammer on one of your, your steel mandrels to get the size you want. Um, don't forget that if it's a wide band or the band thickness itself, like the gauge of it is very thick, you do need to allot a little bit more space for it to get on someone's finger. So um, say that you had a wide band ring and the person is a size seven, you probably should actually make it so the ring is gonna show up more as like a seven and a quarter um, because you will have a little bit of a sizing difference there. Um, I would not recommend using this for rings like this. 
for changing sizes, I wouldn't do that. Um, the reason is, is that this is a circle and you're putting pressure on the inside of this, it's gonna change the entire inside of this ring, not just the band. So that's a good way to accidentally warp your setting and make it concave and probably either pop your stone out of the setting or break your stone, which is not ideal. Um, I have very lightly used this uh, on um, some ones that don't have, like if my, my band's coming in really close and there's not a very big gap, I have used it a little bit for slightly stretching and uh, maybe helping shape it a little bit and just really paying super close attention to what my setting is doing. If I'm, I'm taking it off and looking, I'm not doing full rotations. I have used it a little bit for that, but I know that it's not necessarily recommended for that. So proceed with caution if you're going to be doing anything with stones because stones are in there because they're happy already. Once you start to upset what's around them, they may not be happy in there anymore and you might have diamonds popping off or all kinds of stuff. So this is really meant to be more like a plain band stretcher, but like I said, proceed with caution on other types. Um, so we've got, actually, no, this is looking more like a five, five and a half, five and three quarter now that it's been settling a little bit. Let's give it another push and see how far it goes. Oh, you guys, I broke the solder seam. I guess we figured out our experiment, huh? <laughs> Womp, womp. It's okay. It didn't belong to anyone, and we wanted to see what would happen. So, I think what we can gather from this experiment is anneal first, stretch one rotation, maybe anneal again before stretching for the next rotation. I got almost a full size out of this right off the bat, so that's cool. I can fix it. I'm not worried about it. But even more so, I can probably throw this into uh, a rolling mill. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I will show you guys, since someone was asking about sizing, I know. Like I said, it didn't belong to anyone. We wanted to see how it would go. We figured it out. I guess if I was someone who wanted to salvage this, you know, you could kind of clean up that chunk of Actually, it looks like a chunk of solder. So I'm gonna say the person that soldered this, like I said, this came in a bag of like scrap jewelry, right, for melting down. They put a crap ton of solder in there. It's like, I think that's why it broke. There is a lot of solder in there. <laughs> so solder does not have nearly as much silver in it. So it makes it pretty brittle. And you really wanna use a minimal amount of solder possible. I know when you're first beginning, it's very tempting to kind of flood the solder on there. I totally did that. You know, especially if you're not someone that's going to school and you don't have an instructor telling you differently. Um, you're just kind of looking at ease and you think that more solder is better. And it's definitely not the case. Um, just a little bit of solder and your seams should be very tight and close to each other. And you shouldn't have any problems like that. This one, I think, had a lot. It doesn't even have a maker's mark in it. It just says stamp for the 925. Um, it may just go into the scrap pile to get melted down into an ingot. But something else you could do is um, take your flat file, you know, file this flat on top, solder a setting onto it, and you've got a cute ring since it already decided where it wanted to split, right? So, all right, well, we figured that out. Let's see if my gold thumb ring actually fits because that's what I really wanted. It's kind of fitting like that size six and a half. I had a hard time getting it on my thumb. Should we risk it? and see if I can stretch it a little bit more. I stretched it almost a full size. And I do think gold work hardens maybe a little more quickly than silver. Let's take this back over there and anneal it one more time and then come over and try to stretch it some more. Let's be a little more careful with the gold one. The silver one was funny though. I'm glad you figured that out. Dun, 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 dun. Do you guys feel like you're flying? You're flying. Back over here. Okay. Well, Pablo went in here to tell me I'm doing a good job anymore. He went to bed. Bummer. Okay. So, anyone jumping in that wasn't in here the first round, sorry if I keep repeating myself, but we're going to re anneal this. Our master secret tool. It says Sharpie. I know it's backwards to you, but it's a Sharpie. Hi. 
Um, fine point, whatever you want to use. This is a fine point. That's what I had handy. I won't go through my whole safety nerd uh, protective gear talk again. Um, whoever's new in here can just be surprised about my transformation to looking and sounding like Darth Vader before I do this. Okay, let's put my black spot on there. Y'all see it? This is my indicator for being annealed. Okay. And we are going to turn the torch back on. I'm going to get my glasses on. The one thing about these glasses that I haven't liked, I think because I put them on over my mask so often. Yeah, this crazy situation going on. <laughs> are you my <laughs> Luke? Are you my father? No. Um, so, Sir Metalbeard. Uh, this is the only complaint I had, and I tried to fix it last week with epoxy, and all it did was make it kind of, like, grody looking. So I'm just dealing with the weird ear flap, and I may just entirely end up pulling that out of there and cutting it off, because it's kind of janky. Oh well. It's pre still protecting my eyes, whether the little flap there is not there or not. Okay, so, got an apron, something covered up, right? Darth Vader mask, check. Hello. And we're going to heat this up until um, the dark spot disappears. And the brand of these, I got these off of um, Amazon, actually. But I think you can probably get them. I feel like this might be a U.S. brand. So you probably could get them from the straight from the supplier, too. Uh, the brand is Maggio, M-A-G-I-O. And these are the MSZ, as in zebra, 87 plus rating. Um, so these help with protect your eyes for some of the, the spectrum of the light that comes out of the torch. Like I said, these aren't re recommended for doing large torch stuff like, um, you know, melting down metal and doing like casting stuff. We're going to do ingots. You probably should be wearing more like this intense of a glass, like glasses if you're going to be doing that, okay? protect those eyeballs. We only got two of them. And sometimes when you ruin them like that, you ruin them at the same time. Not ideal. All right, you guys have now seen the second time of me ever annealing gold. <laughs> All on the same live video. I feel so special. Um, <laughs> so, uh, as you saw, and we talked about this, uh, the first annealing, but it's catch up anyone that's just hopping in. Um, it's best to not go straight from soldering surface straight into your quench bowl. You don't want to shock your metal. Uh, the chance of... Um, shocking it and then having brittle metal is probably pretty good uh, if you do it that quick so I'm actually I have a ceramic tile down here okay so I set it on the ceramic tile just for a minute and then I put it in the quench bowl and you still heard it go Tss. so it's good that I didn't <laughs> grab it with my fingers right four steps guys tweezers all the time don't ever pick up stuff off of your soldering station even if you're pretty sure it's cold you don't want to ever test it and find out always quench it um, okay, so this is looking annealed again, and I think we are good to go over and see if I can get a little bit more of a size out of it. Um, I'm probably just going to do like a half pull this time, thanks, and see how far that carried us, um, and see if it'll finally be my perfect thumb ring. That's what we're shooting for. So, we'll find out. Okay, come with me again. Do you guys feel so funny? You keep flying back and forth inside my workshop. And only if you could actually see, I have like this uh, cell phone stand that's like this big with like a big like circular light on top of it. That's what I'm literally hauling back and forth in my shop. You had no idea, huh? I'm a goober. I have no problem hiding it. 
I mean, I have a big problem hiding it. I can't hide it. It just is what it is. Bum bum bum. To the ring stretcher we go. Okay. Thanks! Another birthday witch ho hopping in there. Okay. This is saying... Okay, maybe like more like six and a quarter, that would explain. It's not fitting super snug on there, though. And maybe um, that's not uncommon for after you anneal something that's been a little bit work hardened for it to relax, um, kind of change shape a little bit. So I'm not surprised that I'm putting it back here on. My size is looking a little bit different. Um, so I'm going to do like a half pull um, for anyone just hopping in here. If I do a full pull down, it's been getting us like anywhere from like three quarters to a full size stretch. Uh, if that's not what you want, don't push it back that far. <laughs> and I have it bolted down. Okay, we're just going to do like a half. Okay, did you guys see it move down? I know that was really small. It moved it down like a quarter size just by doing that little tiny pull. Super easy. We'll do a little more. Okay, now it says we're almost to a size 7. Oh my gosh, you guys, is my thumb getting fatter? What's the problem? Okay, two more little tiny baby pulls. I'm not pushing it all the way back because I don't want it to be huge. Oh, are we there? Are we there? Oh my gosh, I want it to fit so bad. Maybe it needs a bigger pull. Oh, let's do it. All right. Maybe it's getting work hard and that might be part of our problem too. Oh, that stretched a lot. Be patient. But look, you guys. Oh, golden thumb ring. So happy. Best birthday present to myself ever. <laughs> And it was already in existence because it was in a bag of scrap jewelry to melt down, so I'm even more happy. <laughs> awesome, right? That makes me so happy. And you know what? It kind of has this like cool brushed finish on it, and I probably shouldn't be standing so close to this ring stretcher next to my eye, should I? Let's stand up. Um, bravo. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank the Academy. Um, I <laughs> am so happy, but I, my line of work, so if you guys uh, head over to my account, um, my handle is Ghost Town Metalworks, and I named it that way for a reason. I like the kind of like rustic stuff, maybe not super finely polished. I do kind of a darker patina. Um, one thing I'm really excited about getting into gold with is experimenting and finding out, um, this is 22 karat gold for anyone that's wondering. Um, I'm excited to experiment with adding patina to gold. I recently just found out that iodine is supposed to oxidize gold. So this ring might be getting some more experiments happening to it. <laughs> and I will happily report the results. Um, because I just finished a set last week. Um, thank you. Uh, I just finished a set last week that's beautiful. It's a combination of um, Midori Verisite and Kalina Verde Verisite, which is from Nevada, and it's a newer Verisite claim, and that stuff is freaking nuts. If you guys go back over to my feed after we're off here, um, you'll see it. And um, I posted the pieces separately. I still have a necklace to, to post, but I actually did an 18 karat gold bezel. Um, just because those stones against gold looked freaking killer. And um, I did the rest in, in sterling just to give a mixed metal look, allow her more versatility in wearing them, and also it helps cut down on cost. But I was so bummed out because I use liver of sulfur to oxidize my pieces, and liver of sulfur kind of has a mind of its own. Um, and a way, the way that I do it is a little bit different. So some days my patina might be a little more dark, some days it's more brown, some days it looks more kind of golden. And that particular patina turned out golden. Um, and so the gold itself, the 18 karat, looked really bright and buttery and beautiful. And the sterling actually uh, pop, like matched it, kind of funny enough, with the oxidation. But that's when I was like, man, I wish I knew how to oxidize gold. I wish I had that figured out already. So I'll need to experiment and see if the whole iodine trick works with um, adding patina to gold because I like that. I love my stuff to look old and... Uh, Everyone has their own aesthetic for their art that they do. I found mine pretty early in, and I just really know what I like. 
and I'm from rural Nevada. I love ghost towns. So I wanted, uh, the idea of my work is I want it to look tarnished. I want it to look kind of old and uh, I figured it could be something like if someone's out walking through a ghost town, which we have in the wild west, right? And I know ghost towns here are laughable to like Europe because you guys are like hanging out in like 2000 year old churches. That's cool. We're like, this ghost town is like 120 years old. Can you imagine? <laughs> um, but if you're walking in a ghost town and kick the dirt and are like, ooh, there's something in there. What is that? Pick it up. And it's like a super tarnished piece of jewelry, like so rad, right? And the more you wear it, it actually polishes itself up. So um, that's all jewelry needs. That's all it needs to not be tarnished actually is for you to wear it. Did you know that? <laughs> it's when it sits that it tarnishes. So it's happiest when you wear it. So all of my stuff, the uh, patina and all that stuff does end up coming off in the highly worn spots because that's what happens. Tarnish comes off when you wear it. Um, my handle is Ghost Town Metal Works uh, with an S on the end. And I have done um, three posts on the Pepe Tools feed here in the last 24 hours. So you should be able to find me there too. Um, if you don't feel like searching for it, but the reason I name my business that way is because, Hey, there's Chris hopping on. Um, the reason I name my business that way is because I don't, I'm not necessarily plan on always being restricted to jewelry specifically. This lady wants to be out like welding and building freaking steel gates for our house, right? I want to be that crazy person out in the yard, making yard art out of old wheels. So I just didn't want to limit myself on what I was doing. I didn't want to limit it to just jewelry. I, I like a lot of different things. I am an artist. I'm a painter. I love painting. I love sketching. Um, I haven't played music for quite a while. I need to get back into that. But I don't know. It's been a cool ride. I appreciate Pepe Tools letting me hop in here again. Um, I kind of I took it over last night, and that was really fun. I had a good time. And then uh, I feel bad for the gal that was supposed to be on tonight. She was having some tech problems, and so I got asked to pop on again. And I'm glad we got to do... A stretcher demo so that worked out fun um, we now have a success and a casualty the world is balanced isn't it the good and the bad <laughs> so I don't know I think I'll throw this guy into being an ingot he can he can live on he did a good job teaching us that um, metal has its limit and maybe we shouldn't try to do more than one full-size stretching at a time <laughs> so, well, and there we go. Uh, Sir Metalbeard said he's moved in the opposite direction. It's well, and now he's getting into jewelry. You know, uh, you're not the first person I've met that's done that. You know, you get, I think you get into your craft and then you get intrigued by somewhat similar, you know, overlapping occupations or hobbies. Um, and it is kind of just a natural progression, I think, to keep growing in your field and your art and your work. So I think when you stop growing and stop experimenting um, and stop learning, I think that's when you're not happy. So roll with what you feel like doing and feel like teaching yourself something else and teach yourself that. Uh, I am an open book. Anyone that doesn't know me already, uh, I post in my stories whenever I do have a bench day. Um, in normal circumstances, I'm out at my bench four or five days a week. Um, lately, because of the COVID-19 thing, um, I am only out here probably two days a week. Um, unless my husband ends up not having work, then I'll actually be out here more because I'm going to stick him with the kids. <laughs> but, you know, our care, like our caretakers have been able to come up because we're isolating, right? Schools got canceled, all that stuff. So what's funny is that, like, everyone's like, oh, getting used to being at home. And we're like, well... Most makers are like, I'm at home all the time anyway. I actually forget it's weird until I go out to get gas or try to get freaking toilet paper and there isn't any. And you're like, oh yeah, the world's weird right now. I forgot. But um, it's funny because a lot of people have been experiencing more time at home and more time to make. And like, I'm opposite. I'm getting less time. So anyway, well, anyone has any questions about anything, I'm an open book. Feel free to follow my account. I am still new-ish to metal smithing. Like I said, I've only been doing this for three years. I'm mostly self-taught. Two of those three years were very part-time. So I'm still learning a lot too. And I love the Instagram community. Um, it's such a great community. And I've met so many people that are so open-hearted, um, open books, and just willing to give knowledge and not feel threatened by it. So anyone is always welcome to, to message me if they have questions. Um, if I know the answer, I often find resources for that. So. And it's been about an hour. They said they're kicking me off in, in 23 seconds. So 
we'll call it good for the night. Sending love to you all over the world. Everyone stay creative, stay sane, stay happy. Exercise as much as you can. If you can get fresh vitamin D, do it. So we'll talk to you all soon and take care. Sorry you caught me later, but we'll share it, okay? This will be, um, this will be in the, the share.